In this video, I'm going to use the ladder operators to define the number operator and construct the Hamiltonian for the quantum harmonic oscillator. First, I need to define the ladder operators. I'm going to define A to be equal to the square root of m omega over 2h bar, this is just the constant out the front, times x hat, this is the position operator, plus i over m omega times p hat, and that is the momentum operator. So what have I got going on over here? This is the position operator, and this is the momentum operator. And I'm combining them together to write this operator over here. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a hat on top of this A, and that's going to tell me that this is an operator in quantum mechanics. And this messy constant out the front is there to avoid messiness later in our calculations. So we put this big constant over here to remove any constants and terms that are annoying in later calculations, because we want a nice condensed form for A. You can also write this in several different ways. You can distribute this constant onto each of these terms, and you can factor out different values. But they are all equivalent to this definition. Keep in mind that there is an imaginary unit i over here. So this is going to change in a second when I define the other ladder operator. So I'm also going to define, I'll do it in a different color so it's uh, clear and distinguishable. I'll define a dagger. This is the Hermitian adjoint of this guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the Hermitian conjugate of this. I'm going to turn this i into a minus i. So I'll write this as the square root of m omega over 2 h bar. And we're still going to have the position operator. But now we're going to subtract i over m omega times p hat. That's the momentum operator. So because position and momentum are Hermitian, they're equal to their Hermitian adjoint. So if we take the Hermitian conjugate of these two guys, of x and p, we're just going to get the same uh, guy over here. We're going to have the same operator. That is a property of Hermitian operators. And Hermitian operators uh, correspond to physically observable values. So we can get physical values of position and momentum from these operators. The eigenvalues of these operators correspond to physically observable values. But these guys are not Hermitian. You can see that this is not equal to this. So what's the point of dealing with uh, an operator that's not Hermitian? Well, it's actually going to simplify a lot of our calculations, especially when we're dealing with the quantum harmonic oscillator. But these guys actually have applications beyond the quantum harmonic oscillator as well. So this is what I'm going to use to uh, do these following few videos. So we have the ladder operators. It's A and A dagger. That's, that's how I'm going to call these guys. This is A and A dagger. This little uh, cross over here is going to be called dagger. And that uh, denotes the Hermitian adjoint. So all we've done is just taken the Hermitian conjugate. We've changed i, and we've turned it into minus i. Everything else over here, these are just constants, and these are two Hermitian operators. So now what I also want to define is the canonical commutation relation. We're going to need that in a derivation I'm going to do in this video. So I'm going to take the commutator of position and momentum. And that is actually defined to be xp minus px. So that's the definition of a commutator of two uh, observables, or I should say operators. These guys are operators, position and momentum. And this turns out to be i h bar. There's a separate video where I derive this. This is called the canonical commutation relation. And we're going to use that shortly. Now, what I also want to define is the number operator. And the number operator is defined in terms of these ladder operators. So I'll write that underneath over here. The number operator, I'm going to denote by capital N. I'm going to put a little hat on top of this. So you can see that everywhere where I have operators, I'm putting a hat. There's a hat on top of all these position and momentum operators. And there's a hat on these ladder operators. And this guy also has a hat. So that is just to distinguish this from any of these other constants. Right? All these guys without a hat, they're just numerical constants. m is the mass, omega, that corresponds to the angular frequency, and h bar is the reduced version of Planck's constant. 
So these guys are not operators, they're just constants. They're numerical values that you can write down and they have units. This guy I'm going to define to be the product of a dagger and a. So we're just multiplying these two guys. The order matters. These guys do not commute. It's just like position and momentum do not commute. So the commutator of this is not zero, it's i h bar. So that means these are not commuting uh, operators. And that's the same situation that we have over here. These guys do not commute with each other. So they're not equal to each other. That means this is not a Hermitian operator and they don't commute. And in fact, when you take the commutator of these guys, you just get one. And there's another video where I will prove the commutation relation between these guys. And that actually takes a similar role as the canonical commutation relation. We're going to use this canonical commutation relation a lot, and we're also going to use commutation relations that involve these guys. Now, what I'm going to do with this definition is I'm going to take these definitions and I'm going to substitute them into this definition over here. So what's going to happen when I multiply these guys together? Both of them have this constant out the front with a square root. So if we multiply these two together, the square root is going to disappear. So I'm going to have m omega over 2h bar out the front. Then what's going to happen? I need to make sure that the order is correct. This a dagger has to be first. So I need this term with the minus sign to come first, and then I'm going to multiply with this. So I'll write that over here. We're going to have the position operator minus i over m omega times the momentum operator. And then we're going to have the same thing, just a plus sign instead of a minus sign over here. So I'll write that here. So we have position plus i over m omega, and then we have p hat. So this is equal to this product over here. We've got a dagger and a. An a dagger has that minus sign, and a without the dagger has a plus sign. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these guys out. And it's very important that we consider the order. The order matters. These are not commutable. Uh, these guys do not commute. So commut commutativity is not necessarily satisfied. That is a very fundamental property in quantum mechanics. Commutativity is not the same as uh, the real numbers. Right? The real numbers, 6 times 7, 7 times 6, they're the same thing. But operators do not necessarily commute. Sometimes you're lucky, and they do commute, and you can swap the order, and it's the same thing. But in general, it's not the same thing. So I'm going to write this a little bit differently. I'm going to write this as m omega over 2h bar. We still have that constant out the front. And I'm going to multiply all of these guys out. First, we're going to have position times position. That, that's just going to give us the position operator squared. So that's a pretty simple uh, little product there. Then I'm going to take this times this. So the term with momentum times the other term with momentum. Here we have minus i, and here we have plus i. Minus i and plus i are multiplicative inverses of each other, so they're just going to give the multiplicative identity, which is 1. Minus i times i is 1. Another way you can think of it is i times i is minus 1, and then we have another minus sign. Minus times minus is plus. So we just get a plus 1, and we're just going to square all the other terms. So that's going to give us p hat over m omega, and then we have to square all of these guys. So we have to square the momentum operator, and we have to square the mass and omega as well. Now, these are the tricky terms. Let's get to the cross terms, which are a little bit tricky, because we have to consider the order. Over here, we don't have to worry about the order, because it's the same operator. We're just timesing the operator by itself. So x times x is the same as x times x. And it's the same for p as well. Now, let's consider this guy times this guy. Both of these cross terms are going to have a factor of i over m omega. So I'm going to write that over here. We're going to have i over m omega. And now let's consider this times this. This is going to give me x p. So I'm going to have x p. And what about the other term? Here I'm going to have p times x, but I'm going to have a minus sign. These guys are both positive, but this has one minus sign. So I'm going to get minus p x. And does this look familiar? This is the canonical commutation relation. It's the commutator of position and momentum. So all of this over here, 
I'll do this in a, in a different color so we can easily distinguish it. This is the same as i times h bar by the canonical commutation relation. So if this is i times h bar, then we can take all of this over here. We'll consider all this entire term is going to be i h bar times i over m omega. So this i and this i are going to multiply. We're going to get i squared. And i squared is minus 1. So we have minus h bar over m omega. So that m omega is from over here. And this h bar has come from the canonical commutation relation. And the minus sign has come from the product of i and i. And I'll just close the bracket over here, because we have a bracket on the other side. And have a look at what we have. What we can do now is we can rearrange these guys in a slightly different way. So I can group up these constants, and I'm also going to switch the order. And you're going to see something very familiar. So first, I'll consider this term over here with momentum. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a different factor out the front. So out the front, I'm going to have a slightly different factor. I'm going to have 1 over h bar omega as the factor out the front. And I'm going to consider this term first. I'm going to swap the order of these two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the momentum operator squared over 2m. And I'm also going to write 1 half m omega squared times the position operator squared. And we'll get to this term in a moment. I just want to show you that this is equivalent to these two terms. So let's have a look at this momentum term over here first. So what do we have over here? We have m squared omega squared in the bottom, and then we have m omega in the top. So one of these factors is going to cancel, and we're just going to be left with m omega in the bottom. And over here, we have m and omega in the bottom. We're dividing by m and omega. And we're also dividing by 2 h bar. Here we have 2, and here we have h bar. I've just factored out 1 over h bar omega over here. So this matches. We, we only need to have one mass in the bottom. We only have one mass over here, because this m squared uh, cancels with one of the m's upstairs. And the same thing happens for omega. So this is valid. And this you can recognize as a kinetic energy term. Now let's have a look at this term with the position. The position term, let's see what we have. Well, we have one mass upstairs. We're multiplying by mass. That's over here. And we also have one omega upstairs. Over here, we have omega squared, but it's canceled by this omega outside. So this omega uh, divides this omega squared, and it just leaves one omega over here. And what about this 2 h bar? Well, this factor of 2 downstairs is this factor of a half. And this h bar is taken care of over here. So we have h bar and omega in the bottom, and we have m times omega in the top. And we also have a factor of a half. So this checks out. And this, you can recognize, is the potential energy term in the Hamiltonian for the quantum harmonic oscillator. So this, this entire thing over here is actually the same as the Hamiltonian operator, h hat. So this is h with a hat on top. And it's a capital H. And what about this term over here, which I've neglected? I'm going to put that outside of these brackets. And if we consider this over here, which we know this is equivalent to, this multiplied by this, have a look at this. We have m omega over h bar. And here we have h bar over m omega. Those are the reciprocals of each other. But here we have a minus sign. And here we have a factor of 2 in the denominator. So that's just going to leave minus 1 half. So we're going to have minus 1 half. So I want you to uh, reason through that algebra and make sure that uh, makes sense. So we've just canceled m omega over h bar with h bar over m omega. And we're left with minus 1 half. So this is equivalent to the number operator. So I'll write this a little more clearly over here. What we're going to have is 1 over h bar omega times the Hamiltonian operator for the quantum harmonic oscillator minus 1 half. So that is what the number operator is equal to. So I'll write this underneath, and we'll do some slight manipulation. The number operator, that's capital N, is equal to 1 over h bar omega times the Hamiltonian operator minus 1 half. So I've just rewritten that clearly over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some slight rearranging. I'm going to move this half to the other side. So I'm going to add 1 half to both sides. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by h bar omega. 
So that's going to give me an expression for the Hamiltonian. So I'm going to isolate the Hamiltonian operator. And the Hamiltonian operator is equal to h bar omega times n hat plus 1 half. So this is now a plus 1 half because we've moved 1 half to the other side. So it's sitting over here. It's n plus 1 half, and then we've multiplied by h bar omega. And we've isolated this expression. We've written it in terms. Uh, we've written the Hamiltonian operator in terms of n. And I can write this in a slightly different form as well. I can write this as h bar omega times n plus h bar omega over 2. And this over here is the ground state energy. And these guys are the quanta of energy. So in the quantum harmonic oscillator, this is the lowest energy you can have. And h bar omega are the energy increments between all of the possible energy levels. And we'll see that in later videos. So what we've effectively done over here is we've written the Hamiltonian in terms of n. And we can also write the Hamiltonian in terms of the ladder operators. We can just write n in terms of ladder operators and substitute this inside here. But this was the goal of the video. The goal of the video was to define these ladder operators, then define the number operator, substitute these definitions in terms of position and momentum, do some algebraic working, implement the canonical commutation relation, and finally end up with this expression for the Hamiltonian operator uh, that describes the quantum harmonic oscillator. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, make sure to watch the other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. There's a lot of videos that deal with the quantum harmonic oscillator. You can find them if you click over here.